All right, we are here at Gartner and it's day three. Look who I have with me, Mark and Purnima. Welcome to The Robert Show. It's such a pleasure to have you both. I'm excited to discuss about Muda and Snowflake, but at the same time, data security, data governance, and much more. Just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? I know the world knows Mark, but uh, <laughs> Purnima, uh, definitely yeah, sure. they know you as well, but would love to know a little about what are you doing. I work at uh, Snowflake. Yeah. I'm a senior sales engineering manager okay. and been working with customers in the manufacturing sector. Uh, and I'm Mark Guntrip, the VP of Portfolio Marketing at Amuta. Yeah. So here at the show, we've had a great time. We've got a great partners here as well. So it's, it's, it's been a good time. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in because uh, we are you know, talking about data security and governance. And it is, to be honest, it's one of my favorite topics to be spoken about. And uh, I would love to know from you both, obviously you both have been in the space for a few years now uh, and have seen the space evolving. So, would love to know a little about uh, what you've seen, how the data security and governance space has evolved over the last few months, maybe a few years, if you can help our audience with something around that. Yeah, sure, I can take it first. Yeah. Um, so, definitely quite a few changes have come about, right. but you know, I'd like to touch on two aspects. One is on an architectural front, yeah. where previously the data platforms were on-prem, and you could just stick a proxy in the middle and then you'd be able to like monitor the data that's coming through. Right. But now you have SaaS applications and your data platform is also a SaaS data platform. Sticking a proxy in there is no longer an option. And what we've done with Immuta is, um, you know, the only viable option is to actually deploy policies natively in Snowflake yeah. as well as make sure that those policies are then uh, managed. I mean, I, I think it's it's clear as well, everything you've said from the shift from on-premise to the cloud has meant that when it comes to security and governance, you have to do it differently, exactly like you just said. Uh, but I think maybe going shorter term in terms of, uh, in terms of the change, you know, if, if you were talking about this maybe a year or so ago, you might be thinking about governance as, an, 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 it's something I have to do, almost an, an inhibitor to business. It's going to slow me down, but I have to do it. Whereas now, with all the, the topics here and the vendors are here, it's very much an accelerator. If, if I want to move faster, if I want to innovate, then if I have my governance, my security in place, then I can continue to do that. If I want to roll out a marketplace, build data products, then I can do that quickly if I have everything in place. So it's really started to shift to become an enabler for the business on the top line, as well as saving money on the bottom line. Okay. The same thing with the props, yeah. process perspective also, right? Yeah. Initially it was just like one central data steward that would like have like entire system centralized. But right. now with the concepts of data mesh, each one of these systems would like to have their own individual um, ownership of the data product as well as they want to make sure that these uh, individual teams also have the responsibility of access and uh, governance as well. This is fantastic, very good information. Also, uh, I'm kind of curious because uh, I have two partners here, I, uh, Immuta and Snowflake, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have so many announcements going out, but I would love to know a little about the recent announcements that were made uh, from Immuta and Snowflake about the partnership, but also about what the roadmap looks like uh, for the community in the future. Yeah, I, I can take that again. Um, you know, the integration between Immuta and Snowflake basically improves the data governance posture for our customers, right? And then what we're working together is um, enabling native functionalities in Snowflake that Immuta can then use and expand uh, you know, the Snowflake product itself. So we're looking at um, discovery and classification using Snowflake tags. We're also looking at um, uh, column masking features. We're also looking at monitoring data access policies. Uh, and all of these are natively available within the Snowflake hori uh, Horizon platform. And uh, you know, Immuta is using it to extend the platform. I, I, th I think from my perspective, as, as I kind of look at the, the partnership between Immuta and Snowflake, you know, there's, the, if you can automate uh, processes, then you can scale even faster. And so for Snowflake customers out there that, that are using the capabilities that are in there, 
you know, if I don't have to think about it, if it's easier, if it's quicker, then I can just keep on growing, keep on building more. Again, coming back to my accelerating, if I've got it in place, mm -hmm. I can accelerate. And that's what we're hopefully doing for, for the Snowflake customers out there. In a secure, compliant way, you can continue to do everything you want to do. That's fantastic. Thanks for uh, sharing those insights. Uh, another quick question, because at, day, at Gartner as well, I've been hearing a lot around AI, and we all are. Not only just at Gartner, but in general as well. So we'd love to know about how AI impact the data security market. How is it going in? Uh, Mark, do you want to take it first? <laughs> I'll, go first. I'll go first on this one. So I, th I think there's a, an architectural shift in terms of how data is being accessed for AI. So we've got the compute side of things, and we've got the structured data, but there's also uh, unstructured data is huge in terms of, of what we need to do in order to, to develop and build this. And that, Again, I'm repeating myself, that kind of comes back to your building blocks of if I've got good security, good governance, good control, I can start to enable all of these, um, uh, all of these capabilities. From, from an Immuta perspective, I think looking at what we have done traditionally was very much focused on structured data, so the shift over to unstructured data and being able to Im, uh, implement policy and security on direct access from unstructured data is a requirement now, and so we're, we're meeting that requirement, the, the demands from our customers as they're looking to, to build out their AI capabilities. Um, I think the, the, the second piece that I put in there in terms of organizations that are building out AI, uh, potentially building or training their own models at least, the ability to do everything that we've done with Snowflake around protecting sensitive data and making sure that only those who have access to the data are allowed to, you can extend that out to the models. So which models have access to what type of data? And you can define that based on who's going to be accessing the data the other side, uh, or just your risk tolerance, but treating the model, the machine, as another user, almost, in terms of how we define what goes where. Love it. Yeah, um, I can take it next. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, in my opinion, as well as like most customers that we're looking at, right, to have a good, AI strategy, you need to have a good, solid data platform strategy, right? True. Yes. So now having said that, we are, you know, LLMs are pushing the boundaries. Uh, we have sensitive data now sitting in these models, like you just said, Mark, and we have to protect that sensitive data. You know, either via feature training, you know, data sensitive data gets embedded into these models, or you have LLM responses that is now also spitting out sensitive information. So we need uh, to make sure that that second level of um, security and governance is made not just at a model level, but also slightly more at the embedding level, slightly more at that feature training level, so, so on and so forth, more at a granular level. I, I know Immuta is, and so is the industry, that's working very, very closely on all of these topics. Fantastic, this is very good information, but that also, brings me to something which is about we are in 2024 and uh, this year is going to be a lot of, there will be a lot of innovations happening but also uh, a lot of traditional things will actually get there, it will become more mature, there will be more understanding in the AI ML space. So what is the top prediction for the market in 2024? Uh, what would you like to share more about it? Yeah, yeah. I mean the buzz is AI ML. I see partners and vendors uh, investing more in 2024 in this AI ML space. Right. Um, A, to solve AI ML uh, security and governance problems, I think, and the second part of that would be using AI ML in their products to better support you know, the AI projects that our customers are taking. So I've heard a lot of predictions here at the show as well. I've been some of the talks and some are very far out of what are we going to be doing in 2030, 2040, 2050. So we can debate that in a decade or so. Um, but I think on, on the shorter term, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's how do we secure AI? How do we use AI to make things easier, simpler, quicker? Uh, and maybe to enable people that couldn't do something before to give them the skills to be able to do it. Whether that is on the security side, how do I enable you to write a policy that is perfectly accurate even though you have no coding skills? I, I just want to write it, I want you to correct it, and then I want to keep on rolling uh, with, with, with what I'm doing with the project. So how do I tie together the different personas that need to be involved to have that successful data project 
so that they know what I've got to do, I know when I've got to do it. It's very easy to come into the process, go out to the process with the goal of getting to the end of, of business outcomes, whatever that might be, yeah. supply, supply chain issue predictions or bringing a product to market quicker, make more money, but we can do that in a more streamlined and more accelerated way. Lovely insights, both of you. Thank you very much, Mark, Purnima, for doing this and uh, visiting the Ravid Show. One last question, that is my favorite question for, and favorite question for the audience as well. If they want to reach out, what is the best place? Purnima, is LinkedIn a good place to reach LinkedIn out to you? A, yes, absolutely, LinkedIn's a good place. And Mark, for you? Uh, yes, LinkedIn, our Remuter website. Again, we, we have folks all around the world that will be happy to have conversations with whoever wants to. So yes, if anybody wants to connect, I'm more than happy. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks to our audience for watching us. Thank you.